Hello and welcome to this whiteboard discussion on hepatocellular carcinoma. I'm Dr. Richard Finn, an associate professor in the Department of Medicine, the Division of Hematology and Oncology at the Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. And today I'm going to discuss the epidemiology of and treatment options for advanced hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma has a very high fatality rate and its incidence is on the rise. HCC accounts for 90% of liver cancers, ranking as the sixth most common cancer globally. And of all cancers, HCC is the third leading cause of cancer-related death. Further, in the United States, between the years 2000 and 2012, we've seen a significant increase in the incidence of this disease. It's grown from an incidence of 4.4 to 6.7 per 100,000. That is an increase of over 50% in little more than a decade. Several known etiological factors are associated with the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. This is somewhat unique among the malignancies that we treat. An estimated 80 to 90% of patients with HCC have some underlying liver disease and cirrhosis. Globally, the most common cause of liver cancer is an association with hepatitis B. In the United States, the incidence of liver cancer is most closely associated with hepatitis C. However, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is also on the rise and contributing. Other factors include heavy alcohol use and metabolic syndromes such as fatty liver and things like hemochromatosis. With the advent of hepatitis B vaccines, hepatocellular carcinoma is considered a preventable disease. Worldwide, the most common etiological factor for HEC is, as mentioned, hepatitis B virus infection. In areas where hepatitis B virus is endemic, the disease is primarily acquired vertically via perinatal transmission. While in areas with lower prevalence, it is primarily sexually or parenterally transmitted. In many areas, surveillance programs have been implemented to screen those individuals at high risk for developing HCC. In the United States, guidelines suggest that for patients who are at high risk of developing liver cancer, such as those with cirrhosis and underlying risk factors for liver disease and liver cancer, undergo screening for HCC. The current screening and recommendation would include ultrasound every six months. It is important not to rely just on alpha fetoprotein, as about one-third of liver cancers do not make AFP, and therefore an imaging component is critical to screening. It's important to find liver cancer early because it is in the early stages that it is curable. For patients whose disease is diagnosed early, such as Barcelona stage 0, A, or B, curative options include surgical resection and ablation or liver transplantation. In well-selected patients, these treatment options yield a five-year survival rate equal to or greater than 70%. The initial approach in the management of patients with HCC is to determine if either surgical resection or transplantation will be an option. The challenge here is that the majority of patients with HCC have some degree of cirrhosis and underlying liver disease, which makes a simple resection complicated. Portal hypertension, as indicated by thrombocytopenia in a plate count less than 100,000, is often considered a contraindication to resection. Local ablation, such as radiofrequency ablation or microwave ablation, may be appropriate for these patients. Still, the only way to cure patients with early liver cancer and underlying liver disease who cannot undergo resection would be transplantation. However, donor organs are in short supply, and there's a long wait list. While resection is the standard of care for non cirrhotic patients, it has a high recurrence rate. For patients who undergo resection, currently there is no data to support the use of adjuvant therapy outside of a clinical trial. And currently, for patients who undergo resection with curative intent, surveillance with regular imaging would be considered standard of care. For patients with advanced HCC, considered stage C disease, Systemic targeted agents have been proven to improve survival. In the frontline setting, these include tyrosine kinase inhibitors, such as serafinib, and more recently, data from study comparing serafinib with lenvantinib has shown that lenvantinib also is active in improving survival in advanced liver cancer. In the second-line setting, regorafenib has shown activity in a phase 3 trial. 
And more recently, there's exciting data with immuno-oncology agents such as the monoclonal antibody nivolumab and pembrolizumab. It is the former class of agents, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, that we will turn our attention to for the rest of the program.